Hi, this is Chris from The Stephanie Miller Show. Please enjoy this exclusive clip from Political Voices Network. Who did I mean by the children? I meant the official stem cell of The Stephanie Miller Show, Victor <laughs> She, who I quote <laughs> all the time. I love that title, the official <laughs> stem cell. <laughs> Host of the iGen Politics podcast with our friend Joe Weinbakes. Hi, Victor. Hi, Steph. So great to see you. Good, so good to see you, too. I have to say, I had Fred Gutenberg on yesterday, and, you know, he uh, shares my optimism. And it's mostly because of people like you and the Justins and uh, Maxwell Frost and, the, the you know, the uh, kids that are just saying, we are not going to live like this anymore. We are not going to be traumatized by active shooter grill, drills and massacres every other, gun massacres every other day. H- how are you feeling about that issue since here we are again? Well, I totally agree with you. I, I wish it were just me or, or Maxwell Frost or the Justins, but the reality is that it's a nationwide movement of young people who are making their voices heard, who are demanding action. I mean, like you said, it's like every single day there's a new mass shooting. And for this generation that had to grow up with um, mass shooter drills, it's just so tiring. And then to see our elected officials after every mass shooting come out and say they are giving us our, their thoughts and prayers but do nothing to actually solve the issue it's just so extremely frustrating and i think that's why you're seeing so many young people across the country not just register to vote but also actually vote and you saw that in wisconsin you saw that in 2022 and i think with 2024 approaching a lot of people are just so kind of fed up with this republican party that is doing nothing and you're seeing people on the streets but across the nation you're seeing young people just kind of kind of sick and tired of what's happening right now and it's just for anyone who cares about their safety their well-being their livelihoods the Republican Party is not doing anything to address that with uh, gun reform, and it's just shameful. And um, I think you're going to see that response um, in 2024. Yeah, yeah. You tweeted, mark my words, Gen Z is watching, Gen Z is paying attention, Gen Z will make Republicans in Tennessee and across the nation pay for messing around with our lives in 2024. Um, you know, and it's also, I feel like, you know, you've been tweeting a lot about that... <laughs> Whatever it's the punditry or, I, you know, saying, oh, people, the Democrats are concerned, Biden's too old, this or that. Interestingly, younger people like you are the ones that don't seem that concerned and are, you know, all in with, with Biden-Harris, right? So I, I think there's definitely it's, it's such an interesting kind of issue to talk about, because I think for some young people, I think that the age and, and kind of how old he is, is kind of does turn some people off. But at the end of the day, if you ask people what they actually care about and, and kind of, you know, who else they would vote for, they can't tell you. So the alternative, just like President Biden often says, you know, don't compare me to the almighty, compare me to the alternative. And young people realize that, I think, more than most generations, which is, OK, he might be old, he might be 80 years old, but at the end of the day, he has actually delivered on the issues that we care about. You think of the Inflation Reduction Act with climate change, the um, Bipartisan Safer Communities Act actually taking a step forward in the right direction of gun reform, eliminating student loan debt, um, expunging people uh, on the federal level with marijuana um, convictions. I mean, those are all things that young people see clearly. And so while age might be a factor, the, the bigger factor is all of the accomplishments that President Biden has done for our lives and also the threat that Donald Trump poses. And so I think, you know, for, for all of the media talking about the age, I just implore them, just look at the accomplishments, look at what this president has done. And I think young people can feel that directly in our lives because we see kind of all the issues and we see President Biden actually engaging with us and listening to us and delivering on the issues that we care about. On behalf of old people everywhere, I'm sorry we failed you. Yeah. Thank you for yes. saving sorry. us. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> you tweeted, Gen Z is growing in political party and Gen Z will turn out and save democracy in 2024. That's why 36 Democratic members of Congress just signed on to a new pledge promising to engage and mobilize Gen Z ahead of the 24 election. Not one Republican signed the pledge. I mean, that's, you know, I keep saying this like, oh, you know, not to be partisan. It's just even David Jolly, former Republican, just said, if you want to do anything about gun violence, you've got to stop voting for Republicans. I mean, yeah. it, it, you know, we just have to acknowledge the times we live in, that it just we, we are not going to get help from any Republicans on pretty much any issue we care about. Absolutely. And and, and that um, pledge that you mentioned, so I'm with a group called Voters of Tomorrow. And so we sent out um, this pledge that basically says that ahead of 2024, um, candidates will uh, engage, educate, mobilize Gen Zers um, in their campaigns before the election. And so we sent it out to every single House member, so all 435, and not a single Republican responded. And it just kind of shows you, I mean, you know, Repu- yeah. in, in this kind of moment, in this political moment, um, we need young people more than ever before to turn out and vote. This is a generation that's more diverse, that has, like I said, more political power in 2024, will be the largest generation of 
kind of any voting demographic. And so you need to engage Gen Zers in order to vote. And so you have 36 members of Congress, all of whom Democrats that responded and said, we will commit to turning out young voters and engaging them on college campuses, um, bring them into our campaigns, just whatever it takes to make sure that they reach young people. But for Republicans, and I think this is kind of why you see what's happening across the country, their natural response isn't to engage with young people. It's to silence young people. It's to do what they did in Tennessee, to uh, suppress the Justins, to ban college drop boxes yeah. like they're trying to do in Texas, to uh, make it harder for young people to vote by requiring more IDs. I mean, this is the natural response to this kind of changing demographic. And I think it's really kind of clear and telling from just the strategy from both sides and, and what they're trying to do to ex either expand or yeah. suppress our vote. And I think that says a lot about the difference between the two parties and at the end yeah. of the day, I think that's telling for young people when they go to the ballot box, they think of, OK, who's actually trying to reach me? Who's actually trying to engage with my vote? And it's overwhelmingly the Democratic Party now. Mm -hmm. I am a member of uh, a group called Old Hack Voters of yesterday who have <laughs> everything up. And I thank you for your work. Um, you, But, you know, you've also raised a good point about uh, gerrymandering. You just said, worth remembering, Ted Cruz won his Senate race by only 2.6 percent. Yeah. Um, and that he was, that he before, that's before he fled the state during an emergency, he, before he voted to overturn mm -hmm. the results of the 2020 election. Don't count uh, Colin Allred out. Right. Colin Allred can flip Texas to blue. And I saw his ad. I have to agree with yes. you. Yes. I mean, Colin Elred, I, I'm so excited for that race. I can't even begin to to, to say. I mean, he's <laughs> such a great candidate as someone who is a former football player, yeah. a former civil rights lawyer. I mean, this is someone who really knows his stuff, and he's not afraid to hold back any punches when it comes to Ted Cruz. So I'm excited for that. Um, but I think when we talk about Texas, and so many people get this wrong, and my friend Olivia Juliana is down in Texas, and she always says this, but Texas isn't a red state. It's just a really gerrymandered yeah. purple state. Yeah. Yes. You have a lot of kind of the areas of Texas. I mean, you think of Dallas, you think of Austin, you think of all these blue areas. I mean, the, the numbers, I think, are on our side. But what Texas has done is they've so gerrymandered the districts where they make it so hard to vote. And just the other day, the Senate passed this bill that would allow the Secretary of State to basically invalidate uh -huh. the election results of the biggest yeah. Democratic county, Harris County. And so, I mean, we're Houston. seeing what's happening in real time. And so yeah. uh, when we talk about Texas, we can't say that it's just a red state because that just allows Republicans to... Um, you know, we take advantage of it and we basically can them a victory, but we have to fight for Texas. We have to turn out as many voters as we can go to, you know, the, the urban areas, but also go to the more rural and suburban areas, really do what Beto or work did, I think really well in, in 2022, which is just go to as many places as you can reach people, meet people where they are. And I think Colin Alred is kind of has the perfect message um, heading into 2024. And with Ted Cruz now, I mean, since 2018, I just hope that as many Texans as possible have woken up to the reality that Ted Cruz first just doesn't everyone care about hates but also him. doesn't care about his constituents i mean <laughs> right. leaving the, the state during this national emergency i mean what, what was that i mean it's so yeah i, I hope that um enough texans r wake up to that but i i, I do think um it, you know it's going to be hard but I, I think colin alred is the yeah. perfect person for the and for the position i can't think of anyone better i don't mean to oversimplify but you know football texas just yes. Yes. i've seen friday exactly. night lights i mean yeah okay <laughs> he's also exactly. fantastic on other uh, in other ways but um but you know here's the thing i'm always concerned about victor and it sounds like you are too is the mainstream media you just tweeted mm -hmm. wtf cnn just announced yeah. it will host donald trump for a live town hall in new hampshire cnn is giving donald trump a free and national platform to spew lies they've learned absolutely nothing they're exactly why our media is failing us and our democracy i mean the minute we normalize this mm -hmm. like just another race I, 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 when he is, I don't even know where we're going to be legally with him. I mean, obviously the, the yeah. seditious conspiracy uh, convictions just came down today. That yes. leads directly to Donald Trump. I mean, I, I feel like I'm living in a, I'm taking crazy pills some days when I'm like, I, this doesn't happen anywhere else where someone leads a coup and tries to overthrow the government and gets to run again. Right. I mean, I, I can't imagine a world 10 years ago, 20 years ago, where the media would be okay platform, giving a national platform to a twice impeached, now indicted mm -hmm. former president of the United States who's running for office. I mean, it's just so beyond the pale. But I mean, I, I think when you take a step back and think about media companies and what they care about, and we saw this um, just a couple of weeks ago with 60 Minutes and Leslie Stahl interviewing mm -hmm. Marjorie Taylor Greene out of all people, is that I think 
I mean, for the, for media companies, they care more about their ratings. They care more about their bottom line. They care about the audience. They want to do these th this both sides is um you know the thing where they try mm -hmm. to give both sides a platform. But this is kind of exactly like I said, the problem with the media now. I mean, all they care about is their bottom line. All they care about is money and the, and the audience that they will generate. But for so many people, they're I think just so sick of seeing this and. For the media to nationalize and give people like Donald Trump and Marjorie Taylor Greene a national platform without any real time fact checking is, I think, really dangerous. And um, I'm not saying, you know, you don't play clips of Donald Trump's rallies on, um, you know, during the day, but I, I think you have to do it with fact checking. You have to do it with the proper kind of yeah. framing. And you can't normalize what they're trying to do because once you do, you're basically giving permission for that side to spew Plus lies almost, and, and yeah. do anti democracy stuff. And so for the media, I think they have to take a hard look at what actually matters. If they care about democracy, if they care about the truth and facts, Platforming Donald Trump and Marjorie Taylor Greene and these extreme Republicans makes no sense. Yeah. And it's just such a crazy um, business model. It just normalizes, like like we said before, lies and conspiracy theories and, and people who are just against the very idea of democracy. And to your point, Victor, it's almost impossible to fact check him in real time because yeah. he lies yeah. at such a velocity and pace yes. and almost everything he says is a lie that it, it, it's you know you're right it's uh, well here's the good news you seem hopeful on jo on the justice front you said uh, that J uh, jack smith was present in the room when white mike smith yeah, testified in yeah. front of the grand jury for hours according to brand new reporting jack smith is charging full steam ahead and no one will stop him you said just imagine jack smith sitting in the courtroom in which you testify imagine his yeah. eyes intently focused on every word that comes out of your mouth and using it to build a case against the former president jack smith knows exactly Exactly what he's doing and wants and now we wait um I, I am hopeful there will be some some more justice let's just say but you're right to get in your mind that the former president is presently on trial for rape while we wait <laughs> on you know his stealing of classified documents and obstruction of justice and on and on and on is kind of astounding isn't it yeah I, I, I am hopeful, and it seems like Jack Smith, I mean, remember, this was someone who prosecuted war, war criminals. Uh, he was a war crimes prosecutor. I mean, he, he, he has dealt with people more than Trump, and so uh, more dangerous than Trump. So I, I think for Jack Smith, this is someone who time and time again, we see Mike Pence trying to fight Jack Smith. We see Donald Trump trying to fight Jack Smith. But at the end of the day, he got what he wanted, which is he got to hear from Mike Pence. He was in the room, and I just... Yeah, like with that tweet, I just can't imagine being in the same room as Jack Smith and his eyes just like laser focused <laughs> on every word that I'm saying. It's honestly sort of terrifying to me, but um, I, I think that was just such a remarkable thing to know that Jack Smith, was, Jack Smith was in the room. And like you said, I mean, there's so many other investigations into Trump. I mean, you have Letitia James in New York, you have E. Jean Carroll, you have Georgia, you have the Mar-a-Lago case, January 6th. I mean, on all these fronts, it seems like you know, Donald Trump is it, it, they're they're reaching the tip of the the iceberg in terms of yeah. um, holding Trump accountable. And I, I just hope that more justice is going to come. It, I'm not a lawyer, but it seems like every kind of legal expert I've talked to seems like there will be at least uh, a couple more indictments and charges against the former president. And so, yeah. um, you know, it, it's like that's well, all good news. But at the end of the day, I really hope that the Republican Party rec wakes up to this and, and realizes that this is our nominee. This is someone who has broken the law. This is someone who was indicted not just once, but multiple times. Yeah. And um, we have to be better than this as a party. And and that's my biggest hope. But I'm fearful that this Republican Party, kind of what Trump has unleashed, Trumpism, will go far beyond what yeah. happens to Trump. Or the official stem cell, as you know, the Stephanie yeah. Miller show, which is a joke. That's going to be my new title. No, because you're in college, so you're, uh, what, seven? I, I don't really, I, did, I, didn't, graduate? I didn't have kids, so I don't know. Did How you, old did are you? Did you graduate? No, not yet. I'm graduating next next June. Okay, got it. From UCLA, yes. my my you know <laughs> my sworn enemy as uh -huh. a USC grad. And oh yet, no, the Bruins are great. That's where my mom went. <laughs> oh oh, fight on for old SC. <laughs> <laughs> Bruins, Bruins. <laughs>
Our one-of-a-kind system helps put the power of creativity back into the only discerning palette in the room that matters, yours. Welcome to Blendteak Wine Company, and welcome to your wine.